uh, all this starts with the legislation. Um, and so the legislation lays out exactly how you get from point A to point B all the way to point Z as far as uh, permitting and, de and decommissioning. So that's really important. Um, it starts everything from uh, our, all the perspective of everybody else here, I think, too. So that's one of the things that really is uh, going to drive all this. Take a look at it. Take a read. Um, and again, as I said, if you have uh, uh, some opinions about it one way or the other, talk to your legislature. That's how this works. I'm going to take one quick minute to uh, remind myself of uh, something my son said to me the other day when he was setting up uh, Star Wars Legos battles. And I said, um, you know, what's going on in this battle? And he said, you know, good versus evil, same as always. <laughs> and, you know, I, I laughed, of course, but, but you know, I, I want to just present this as not a situation where we necessarily have good versus evil same as always, you know, the, theirs is a complicated topic and we're educated people and we care about this beautiful resource, the Great Lakes. And so I, I encourage all of us to, to look at um, all of these issues and to bring people to the table like we are today so that we can discuss our concerns and make sure that they are addressed in, a, in an efficient, effective way, in my opinion, through science for many of the uh, wildlife related environmental topics and, um, and then work toward a solution or a way to resolve that. It's, it's worth noting that, uh, uh, well, obviously energy is important to everybody. Uh, it's worth noting too that sometimes people search for a silver bullet. There, there is no silver bullet. Uh, wind is on land, offshore is not a silver bullet. Nuclear power is not a silver bullet. Solar energy, uh, what the state needs is a diverse portfolio of, of different resources that complement each other. And, uh, and wind has a place there, both offshore and onshore. Uh, onshore coming pretty quick here. Uh, we're going to see a big ramp up over the next years up to 2015. Offshore, down the road a little ways. Uh, efficiency is going to be real important if we want to have an economical energy system. Uh, and what also is going to be real important is uh, people are talking more and more about a smart grid because the smart grid is going to let us really make good use of what is a variable resource. The wind doesn't blow all the time, uh, but it does have a, a, a real place. Uh, and what's really going to help make it work real well is the grid is getting smarter and smarter. Uh, with respect to doth, both managing uh, energy efficiency, uh, which is more and more coming, uh, and also, you know, kind of accommodating uh, solar power and wind power. So uh, it's, it's an interesting time that's coming. Uh, and like I said earlier, too, uh, we've got, as a, as a state, we have some important decisions to make uh, in the next few years. And you're going to hear a lot of information. A lot, you'll see ads on TV. Everybody's going to tell you what the silver bullet is. Uh, don't believe it. There is, there is no <laughs> silver bullet, um, but they, uh, most of these sources will have uh, a piece of the action. And it's, it's, it'll be uh, all of our jobs to fit the pieces together in a, a responsible way, in a way that hopefully is fairly economical. And John had mentioned that Michigan's fossil fuel uh, fleet of plants is the second oldest in the country. So we are at a point here in Michigan where we need to make some upgrades to uh, more modern facilities. And whatever we choose, probably going to be choosing from a lot of different things. Um, let's make choices that in, um, improve the quality of the Great Lakes and improve the quality of life for Michigan communities. <laughs> Let's it doesn't mean you get that, two 30 second period. <laughs> <It's laughs> yeah, right. That's good. Um, it, you know, yes, 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 and yes. Uh, I, I would very much agree, uh, you know, as a developer, I should be saying it's offshore and only offshore, but it's not. It's, it's a diversified portfolio. We, that's what we're told when we do our financial stuff and everything else, diversify, diversify. So that's exactly right. Um, but I, I do think as stewards of this beautiful blue-green ball that we all live on, and particularly living here in the, one, of the, one of the true crown jewels of this country, the Great Lakes region, we, we, we have for a long time, and I say this lovingly, we, you know, we're, we're net users, right? We benefit from the other guy having to dig the coal 
or drill the gas or drill the oil and just bring it to us and we'll use it. Well, we need to be better stewards. We need to be participants in capturing and using the energy and it needs to be clean energy. So I would say it's time for us to, to um, thoughtfully, wisely, correctly take advantage in a positive sense of this amazing free resource that is Michigan's energy, Michigan's future. Um, let's capture it amongst these other opportunities and let's, let's have the best of both worlds. And, and the key again gets back to correct thoughtful citing. And so my last piece is do please strongly consider supporting this legislation and, and, and helping protect our interests because that, that plays a role. I'll end by saying, please don't take energy for granted. I think we are coming off of a long, long period of time where we all have taken energy for granted. Um, as uh, as uh, someone has said, and I, I borrow this uh, little saying uh, quite often, uh, are the lights on? Is the beer cold? Is the TV working? And as long as those three tests are met, <laughs> We don't really worry about where energy comes from or how it comes about. Um, the lights that are on in this room right now, we owe to some people in other places. As Mike has just said, 100% of our coal is imported in virtually all of our oil. Uh, there are some people in Virginia that sacrifice their mountaintops. There are some men and perhaps even women who have gone deep into the earth to dig out coal with explosives and put their life at risk. There are people in Wyoming and Montana whose viewscape has been trashed, who are looking at open pit mining, and all of that was sacrificed so that we here in Michigan can enjoy the lights on. So I think we have an obligation to sort of have, a, have an ethical consideration, and if we have natural resources right in our midst that we can take advantage of, I think we have a real obligation to do that and at least become much more mindful of what our energy choices are, our policies, and, and the range of options we might employ. And, and I too would close by saying please go home and Google HB 6564. Uh, this is truly an opportunity for all of you in this room to lean in and um, uh, use the legislative process that is there for you uh, to express your opinion to perhaps influence the final outcome of the legislation that's on the table. And I would encourage all of you to uh, in turn encourage your legislators, your representatives to take action on this before the end of the current legislative season.